What is up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel, Mystic Watch. And today, we got Knighthood Boss Battle, or Guild Boss, version 2. So this is the updated Guild Boss. It finished after last night. You were able to go in, and the new one is out. And to be honest, it's a billion times better than the previous one, just because of RNG factors, right? I did one run on each, and I'm just so far above, like, the 1,200 points. It's just so much easier to get more points on here without, like, the RNG crit needed from Jericho. Now, sometimes you do, like, five, six, seven runs in a row, and you just wouldn't get a crit. So this is a completely new point system. It doesn't rely on getting, like, a two million crit with Jericho. So I did one run on each, and I was just able to get these scores pretty easily. And the way that the scores break down is... Okay, so, you can take a look at here. This is like the most basic stuff. And, uh, like, you get a decent amount of points for doing damage between, like, these brackets. So before, you would get damage based on your maximum critical, or your maximum hit, right? But now, it's just, if you hit over 500k damage, you get an additional 200 points. It doesn't matter if you hit 5 million points or, you know, 501k. It's just, that's how the points are provided. Majority of your points are going to come from this. Additional points to the number of surviving heroes, additional points to remaining HP, additional points proportional to team combat class, additional points proportional to great damage dealt against enemy. So yes, you do get some points. So you get more points for hitting harder besides this, but it's not like that much skewed. Point deduction proportional to turns used. So the same thing, you want to finish it as fast as you can. The more turns you take, the less points you get. The majority of your points are going to come from two things right here. Team combat class and remaining HP. Those are the two things that will simply just give you the most points. When you look at your score breakdown, and you will see like, oh, okay, this is where all my points are coming from. So, it's not percentage remaining HP, even though that's what it looks like, right? Like, that's like the big difference. It says proportional to, like, when it says proportional, like, you think, oh, it means percentage. No, it's not a percentage. It's how much, like, numerical HP you have left. And because of that, you want to have the highest HP pool possible, and that would ideally be, like, four, for example. You know, we take a look, like, my Escanor has 130k HP because I have um, HP defense set on him. So he has a massive amount of HP. And that, like, you know, he's contributing a decent amount of points to me. For example, this Alioni is, isn't doing too much for me. If I replaced him with someone with a lot more HP, it'd be better. Now, in terms of team composition, this is what I'm running only because this is, uh, my units are leveled up and I just wanted to do it. But if you were to do like, most consistent, best scoring team that you could run, it would have to be, mm -hmm. like, you would have to have Jillian in there, and probably, so like, instead of Merlin, you put uh, Jillian, and instead of Alioni, uh, where is it? I, I haven't leveled her at all, but Green Elizabeth, or Green Ellie Hawk, and that's because of her passive is increases all allies' HP-related stats by 10%. So she's increasing HP related stats by 10% and Jillian's doing all green allies by 30%. And hers is just, I think it's just HP, I don't know if it's HP related stats. I, I can't read. Let's take a look. HP, right? So it's a massive HP boost and that uh, makes a really big difference. And then you can just stack HP food over here to bring it up even more. And then the higher CC you have, like my CC is relatively low for this, uh, just because I don't have proper gear sets. I only have like one complete HP defense set, and I've just been uh, too lazy to use my anvils to build another one. But besides that, more HP sets, the better it is. Like damage isn't as important in here, right? Like yes, you know, the more damage you do, the better, but 
the damage doesn't scale that well into points, so as long as you have one person who can kill the thing, everyone else being stacked on HP defense food is great. So I talked about Elizabeth and uh, Jillian a bit, but the other two, Eskinor here is massive uh, beefy stat boy, and then on top of that, he just uh, hits like a truck. Yeah, uh, he's like perfect for this, the boss battle is blue. And then Valenti, if you did manage to do all 10 steps, is guaranteed. So Eskinor is the only one who isn't guaranteed on here. Everyone else you should be able to get for, you know, naturally. Like Elizabeth, everyone has from playing the game. Yeah, right? Elizabeth, Green Elizabeth is who you start off the game with. And then Jillian is an SR, so you're bound to get her at some point. Now Valenti, I do have my Valenti 6-6. And that will help, right? Like that, that helps me get a better score. But her ultimate does rupture, and this boss almost always has one buff on. So the Valenti does hit hard. Besides that, for Valenti, the reason why you like using her is because she has a good amount of resistance. Right? I have her outfits, but you can give her a resistance gear, and then her passive reduces their pierce rate by the amount of her resistance. So you reduce the pierce rate enough to the point where he just can't hit you. And once you do that, it's pretty straightforward from there. If he can't hit you, you don't take uh, corrosion damage at all. And you have a good amount of HP. Like you're finishing the run with like 99, 95% of your HP majority of the time with this team. But like I said, I have Merlin and Elioni in here just because I was doing the run and I don't have the other two leveled up. So I gotta take some time to get get the materials, level them all up. This is just for the sake of showing you what the boss battle is actually like. And if we take a look at him, you can see what he actually does here. So he's got four buffs on to start off with once you get rid of the HP bar or like the, the blue barrier. Everything but the defense related stats leaves, so only this is left over. Then you can take a look at everything he does. He uses the Atom Shield every two turns, negative influence every three turns, number of skill uses two, immune to these things, so you can't go like, you know, Merlin or. Is it Gustav? Is that his name? Freeze into big hit. Prioritizes attacking enemies with buffs, which increase attack. Decreases damage taken from counters. Right. So normally... I just do whatever. I usually like to wait until I get a Valenti card. And then I'll combine the Valenti cards and get her ultimate guaranteed next round. So I didn't get a Valenti card, so we'll just go for Escanor. Oh, my Escanor. But why? Oh, the crit. And there we go. We will have Escanor ult. There's a car outside. Now here is tricky because it's like I don't know if I will <laughs> kill. Uh... Okay, I think I'm fine. No. Why, Valenti? Why are you so strong? Okay, well there you go. Like if I hit with the Escanor ult. Would've been more damage, would've been more points. But I got greedy. I was trying to get the defense, uh, defense related stats down on him first. Oh, I should've shown the, the score breakdown. But let's go over to here. It's pretty much the same concept. I don't think I used the food at all. Let's go use food. Then we'll go in. The HP food is actually pretty good here. Like I said, more HP means more points that you're getting at the end of the day, and then at the same time, it's more Team CC. HP gives a, a good chunk of CC for you. Yep, 
Yeah, yeah. And then eventually we'll get Extreme, and then once Extreme comes down, I'll do a separate video on that. And I'll probably try to go for some high score, the same way how I got the 2 million crit on... 2... 3... 4... The same way how I got the, uh, the 2 million crit on Jericho. Something like that is always fun. Come on, blue stacks. I believe in you. Damn, no Valenti cards. So you see here, like this is why having better sets helps you out here. Because if I had more resistance on Valenti, like the Alioni probably wouldn't have gotten attacked. But I just have a really bad set on Alioni, sadly. Go. No, Alioni. <laughs> he crit me for two damage. This isn't going to do that much damage, right? I don't know if I take any chances, so we'll do this. There we go. So Valenti should be able to break through. Defense related stats down. Escanor hits. 202k. Good job, Escanor. And there you go. Just like that. So we can actually show you the score breakdown here. Show you where everything's coming from. So you see here how I'm getting almost a thousand points between my CC and remaining HP. If I have significantly better, like, you know, if I have another HP set I give to Elioni, and if I had Jillian on there, like, so, not Elioni, if I had Jillian and Elizabeth, this would be closer to, to 2,000 points. And just like that. So, that's kind of how it works. It's so much easier to do. Way less RNG involved. And it makes it not feel like a pain, like a chore. Getting your 1200 points shouldn't be too hard anymore, and that's about it. So, my points are gonna be higher, like you can see. My guild is full of whales. Escanor is 6'6, six, six. Valenti is 6'6, six, six. you know, we have better gear on average. But that being said, you shouldn't have any issue getting to this point bracket, right? So, getting to 1200 points isn't gonna be hard. And that's about it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. If this helped you out, let me know. And I'll see you all next time.